And those young women were the first people I met when I um, rocked up in Glasgow because I, was, uh, I wasn't allowed into the Blue Zone until the second week. So I was um, moving around, finding out what was going on in, in civil society, as they've now decided to call it. And um, these young women were astonishing. They'd come to talk about what their mothers had done. And as a grandmother, I found that really quite reassuring. Uh, they come to say that their mothers had sat quietly thinking with the rest of their village about land rights and discussing it for 10 years until they decided collectively they'd go to war. And that's when they went to war to get their freedom back. So they sat there with their, their samplers making these beautiful little pieces which was symbolic, that was subversive stitching of the best possible kind. Later on, when we did the big march, um, which was huge, there were 150,000 of us, marching all the way down from the park into um, Glasgow Green, around the, um, the, the, the People's Palace in Glasgow Green were hung on washing lines about two miles of subversive stitches. And women from all over the country have contributed these statements about what we must do about climate change. So they were about water, they were about food, but mostly they were about social justice and injustice. So it was a fantastic place to be for two weeks and I, I don't feel cynical about it. I had a great time talking for, to people from all over the world and they had a great time talking to each other. So the Zapatistas were the first people that I met. But the last people I met were the people on the train on the way home. So I got my bike on the train and it was really difficult because there wasn't enough space. And these two young men were sitting down and I said, can you move, please? I, I need to sit down. And then I said to them after they moved, um, so are you, what are you doing? Why are you going to Manchester? Oh, well, we're studying at Lancaster University, they said proudly. So I said, oh, that's good. So what are you studying about climate change at Lancaster University? There was a horrible silence and one of them said, I think there's a module in year two. So I said, what subject are you doing? Economics, he said. <laughs> so that was the last set of people I met. But actually, on the way in on the train to the Blue Zone, because um, I was staying out of Glasgow, I met a beautiful couple of young women all masked up and they were holding their placard that they were going to take to the march which we had on Friday which was a Fridays for the Future enormous march as well and it said on this great big yellow sheet it said is the future too is our future too much to ask for <laughs> so there were young women and young men who had spent a lot of time thinking about what they wanted to say and encapsulate it on a on a placard and they took it with them and they had an enormous experience it must have changed the lives of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of young people a lot of them took their parents and some of them were only three and one of the three-year-olds I'd encountered in George Square and she was sitting on the pavement waiting patiently and I said what are you waiting for she said Greta Thunberg is going to speak and they waited all afternoon for Greta to speak because she decided that all the other young women from all the other young people from the rest of the world should speak first and they did and they were very very eloquent it was a joy it was a, so exciting to be in that throng on the Friday so the following week um, I, I managed to get into the blue zone which was great uh, I had to go through all that security stuff and what I discovered was that there was a very small space as you go in uh, where young people were allowed in a group at a time to make a noise and make a protest. The rest of the time they were herded out back outside again. But all over the blue zone there were young people. And when I say young now I'm talking about sort of 20, 20 to 30 young year olds. They were fuming. They were absolutely fuming. Some of them managed to get on the stage. Um, we had a fantastic women's day on the Thursday. 
and um, the the first minister of Scotland was chairing it, and she chaired um, an extraordinary statement from a young woman from Uganda, no, from the Gambia, who was telling us what it's like being in the Gambia as you watch your only city about to go underwater, where you're suffering from droughts and floods and food is becoming more and more scarce and whole of your life is becoming more and more precarious. And she spoke with such passion that nobody could have ignored it. So I met wonderful young women there and I also managed to get into Glasgow College. I was invited to go into Glasgow College to take part in something called Climate Fresk, which I'll tell you about um, later on, I'll send you the details, which is an interactive process with children from schools and children from schools were going into Glasgow College in groups to undertake this piece of work and I talked carefully to a young man about what his experience had been because I joined in and he said well he said I, I drew this forest um, and then I circled the bits you know in red that were going to be affected and and look at it he said it didn't till you've done it all that you realize it's too late and it's too late and I thought I hope somebody's going home with this young man because he's going to need some care because he's suddenly made sense of this appalling jigsaw so at the end of it I think my provocation to you and to all of us is um, how are we going to move forward as educators it's great we've got the SDGs but what can we do to educate our teachers so they can enable climate activists and be climate activists themselves.